story isn't over my story's just begun failure won't define me cause that's what my father does failure won't define me cause that's what my father does Ooh, lay your burden you if you will to stand and sing with us today aren't you glad you're in the father's house today Bible's not the end game the journey is where you are never wanted perfect you just wanted my heart and the story is things happen when you come to the Father's house today. teachers and whatnot here this morning as I do because I don't know about you all I didn't even have to teach class uh, and I'm pretty tired so I'm sure you guys um, are absolutely worn out but if you can see all the food up here we had a great week at VBS um, a bunch of kids screaming and hollering and running around here all week um, we collected let's see you got some totals there for me we for in food this week we collected 1184 uh, cans of food and boxes and different things that are going to go to the the Good Samaritan this week. So that's going to be pretty awesome. Going to load that up and get it down there. And then uh, money for missions. We collected two thousand two hundred twenty-eight dollars and eighty-six cents that are going to go to uh, various different uh, min ministries that we uh, work with here at the church. So 
It was a great week. We're going to meet again tonight. We're going to have family night here at 6 o'clock. Um, we will go through kind of the beginning opening of the service, and then uh, Pastor Gary will get up here and, and talk to us for a few minutes, and then we will head down either to the tent or into the youth house to do ice cream and cookies. We're going to wait and kind of check and see how hot it gets today, just see if it's a little bit too hot maybe to be out there running around outside. Uh, so one way or the other, we'll, we'll figure it out this afternoon and, and, and let you know that tonight. But come out at 6 o'clock. Uh, any kids that are here for VBS, remember we're asking you to bring crayons and colored pencils tonight for Operation Christmas Child um, so that we can get those items uh, out for that. Okay. Uh, a few things going on this week. Uh, Wednesday night, we will be doing Bible drill. Uh, we were going to confirm there, Pastor Gary. Are we doing that in the youth house? Up here, up here. Everybody's up here Wednesday, right? Everybody's up here to, uh, to witness the Bible drill and have a few uh, uh, young, young people going through that, um, doing their memorization books of the Bible and different things so they can move on to the next um, step of that. Thursday night at 6.30, Iron Sharpens Iron will be back and meeting um, in the small assembly room in the youth house. So men, if you uh, would like to be here for that, Thursday night at 6.30, that would be great. Then uh, next Sunday, July 31st, in the evening, uh, we will be doing a solemn assembly at 6 o'clock as the uh, kind of finishing up for the 40 days of prayer um, for a special time of, of prayer and worship in a, in a somewhat of a silent way. So we're going to be real quiet next Sunday night. Uh, Pastor Ray will talk a little bit more um, about that. And then August 3rd, or also on July 31st in the morning, I'm sorry, we're going to do our Bless the Schools commissioning service. Um, asking any teachers and administration from the schools here locally to come uh, be with us as we pray over our new school year. Summer is over. It happens fast. It's time to go back to school. Um, so we need to be praying uh, for that next Sunday morning. And then next, the following Wednesday there, August 3rd, uh, we'll have nothing here on campus. We'll be meeting at our different schools and doing some prayer walking. Um, Pastor Gary's putting together some prayer walk guides uh, for that so you guys can meet with your Sunday school classes or whatever group it is that um, for the school that you service um, and be there to do the prayer walk uh, for that so a number of things going on uh, once again be here tonight six o'clock for VBS family night even if you weren't a part of VBS this week we would love to have you here tonight to hang out with us and Pastor Gary's raising his hand yes sir yes yes I I didn't figure you were going to skip that part we we just, might, we just might not stand outside and sweat before we do it, right? We, we may do it in the air conditioning. We, either we're going to do it in the air conditioning or outside, but yes, there will be ice cream. There will be cookies this evening, no matter what, all right? So please come hang out with us for that, all right? Let's pray, and we will continue to worship this morning, all right? Father God, I love you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. God, I pray that you would be with our service, God, as we go forward. Father, that we would lift you up. Uh, and, and just worship you as the king and creator that you are, God. I pray for Brother Ray as he comes to speak this morning. Father, I pray that you would fill him with the Holy Spirit. Use him in a mighty way, God, to advance the kingdom here in this place this morning. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. darkness falls it won't prevail cause the God I serve knows all we have triumph and my God will never fail my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a Ready to see some victory? There's power. Power by the name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant.
gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Do you believe that this morning, church? Amen. I know sometimes it feels like we just wonder if we ever will because we've been fighting so long and so hard and just feels like we're running up against a wall and there's been no breakthrough, no, no victory, but God, but God. And there's so many times in the Bible where that phrase changes everything. And the same God is still in the business of granting victory today. And, and the struggle is going to be part of your story, but you are going to see a victory. Because God is faithful and He is true and He is just and holy. And He is victorious. If He can conquer the grave, He can take care of anything that comes up in our lives. So... Be okay with the story. Be okay with where you are today because God is going to move. We have blessed assurance of that fact today. Sing with us again. This is, this is our story. And we'll see, get through it. Praising our Savior. Blessed assurance. Submission, perfect.
we just thank you for who you are. Amen. God, and no matter if we're on the mountain top or if we're in the valley low, you're there. And God, may whatever our circumstance be, may we say blessed assurance. Because if we're on the mountain, we'll soon be in the valley. But God, if we're in the valley, we'll soon be on the mountain. Whatever walk of life you find yourself in this morning, our prayer is that you can say, blessed assurance. God, we thank you so much for what you've done this week at Vacation Bible School. And we thank you that whatever our circumstance, whatever our walk of life, what you're going to continue doing here at New Providence Baptist Church. And in a season that we need you more now than ever, may we say, blessed assurance. We love you, God. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross to save us from the pits of hell. And God, may I be forever grateful because you are forever faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
Well, good morning, New Providence. Good to see everybody. It's uh, got a different stand up here. I told them I said make sure I had enough room to put my Bible and whatever else I need to put up here. Uh, vacation Bible School was great, uh, energetic. I'm glad I had a day off. I didn't sleep well Friday night, slept like a log last night. Ann said she slept like a log Friday night, didn't sleep well last night. So anyway, we, we made it through. And uh, so tonight's going to be an exciting time again. And so I invite you to come back and uh, see what these kids have learned. And uh, the fact that, you know, we had, had a couple salvations, that's what it's all about, is uh, teaching kids the Bible and leading children, adults, young people to the Lord. Next Sunday night, as Charles uh, indicated, we're going to have a solemn assembly. And um, it is the wrap-up or conclusion of the 40 days of prayer um, for revitalization. And of course, it talks about toward church revitalization. Well, if a church is going to be revitalized, individual Christians have got to be revitalized. And next Sunday night, it's going to be just a simple service. And uh, we've got six people, Daniel Pinkston, Gene Rankin, uh, Rick Bullard, Sarah Pinkston, Tony Arnold, and um, uh, Lisa Inman is going to come, and they're going to share a week each. So like Daniel will take the first week, and he can share with it whatever he gleaned out of the first week and then Gene will do the second week and on down the line. And that'll be the only verbal communication we'll have the rest of the time. We're hoping that everybody will, will honor the request to enter the sanctuary silently and to uh, spend time quietly in prayer uh, seeking God's guidance and leadership, which we should have been doing all along as we've been going through the 40 days of prayer and um, continue to do so. But that night, we just want to come in a solemn moment uh, before the Lord. And um, so looking forward to it, and I hope that you'll come, and hope you'll come tonight, because tonight will not be silent, okay? <laughs> I'll, just have to, I'll just have to say that. I'm going to lay my book here, so there's not enough room up here. But the, um, also, the memory verses that we've been doing um, the one for last week was uh, a little lengthy. Uh, this is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. And that's from 1 John 5, 14, 15. But the one today is very short and is one probably we've learned over the years. It's from 2 Timothy 1, 7, in which, God, which Paul said to Timothy, he said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind or self-control. And so that'll be our memory verse for this week. And also, several have asked for copies. I had 10 copies out last week of the different verses that we've memorized to this point, and um, they were all taken, so I put 10 more copies out. So if you'd like a copy, and if those 10 are gone, I'll put 10 more out next week until uh, you have them. But I want you to, to have those. And uh, in fact, not only do, do they have the verses that we've already memorized, but also the future verses that will be coming up. So we'll kind of give you a, a jump start on uh, what's coming uh, in the future. Last week, or two weeks ago, actually, it started a series on uh, a four part series on healthy traits that every church needs. And the first one we talked about was unity, and that is kind of the capstone or the foundation stone uh, for this whole thing. Because if, if, if a church is not in unity one with another, then they can't be in unity with Christ. And so consequently, there's issues that often arise within the church when there's not any unity. And we talked about the fact that <clears throat> unity and unison are different. Unison means that everybody's in lockstep walking uh, along, you know, like uh, you've seen pictures of the um, uh, soldiers from different countries like China and uh, back in Germany under the Nazis that they walked with that goose step and all of them walked in the same 
formation. That's being in unison. But being in unity means that, you, that we come together and we all maybe have different opinions about things, but uh, when it's all said and done, when the church comes together and says, this is what we're going to do, then everybody joins together and says, yes, even though I may have had a different opinion, I am going to come together and join together as a church. That's what unity is. And last week we talked about uh, forgiveness and faith and trust and faith. And I indicated the fact that forgiveness is perhaps the, the hardest thing that God has asked us to do. And we indicated the fact that whenever we do anything wrong and if we're a Christian and if we're sensitive to God's leadership in our life at all, then we will come before him and say, God, forgive me because I have sinned against you and I have, I have moved away from your command in my life. Please forgive me. But then when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, when it comes down to that flesh and blood person who is standing in front of you and who has said something to you or done something to you that you didn't like and it hurt you, and God instills upon your heart to say, go to that person and ask their forgiveness or forgive that person for what they've done. That is often the most difficult thing that we have to do because we're dealing with people face to face. God is many times an abstract, but people are right there. And that's really the only thing in the scriptures that God has given us that has a contingency to it because it says in Matthew, in conjunction with the model prayer, that it says that if you want God to forgive you, then you've got to be forgiving. You've got to be willing to forgive other people of the things that they do. The second word that we looked at last week was trust. And of course, you know I had Tony come up and I fell back in his arms. First time I didn't do it because I got nervous and I bent my knees. But the second time... You know, it's not that I didn't trust him, it's just, you know, it's just a, just a reaction, you know. But the second time, I did fall back into his arms, and I trusted him. I trusted him that he was going to catch me. And the illustration was to point out the fact that that's the way we need to deal with Jesus. That Jesus is there all the time. He says, I am with you. I am going to strengthen you. I am going to catch you when you're falling. That's trust. And then the second word, third word was faith. Uh, faith is that long-term thing. When we come to Christ and give our heart and our life to him, then we're literally coming and saying, I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I walk with him. And we indicated that uh, trust and faith are probably uh, two sides of the same coin because they kind of go hand in hand together. And today we want to talk about three more uh, aspects of a healthy church or healthy traits that every church needs and then next week we're going to be talking about the final three but today I want to look at uh, the first one is is hope and what is hope a lot of times when we hear the word hope our first reaction is well I hope that when I get in the car, I hope it's going to start because it's been giving me some problems, and I hope it'll start so I can get it to the mechanic. Or we'll say, if our refrigerator is not producing the amount of coal that we want, we'll say, well, I hope it lasts long enough for the repair man to get here to do this. So we, you know, use the word hope in a lot of different ways in earthly settings of what we hope for on this earth. Well, from a Christian perspective, hope is different because it's not that hoping that something will happen or hoping that that we can bring this to bear but hope from a Christian perspective is something that's already been sealed because when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ then we know that the hope that we have in our heart will be fulfilled because he promised it would be because when we come to Christ and give our heart to him, we know that the one promise that he has given to us is that we will be with him for all eternity. That is eternal life. That is the promise that he has given to us. And as we live on this earth and as we face all the different things that we face on this earth, then we live in a sense of hope of that promised day because we know that when we die, when we take our last breath off this earth, that we're going to be with Jesus. It is so sad to me that there are so many people 
in this world who eh, they believe there's a God out there or they believe something's out there or, or whatever, but, but they, they don't have that assurance. And that's what the Christian hope is, is assurance, that blessed assurance that we are going to be in the presence of Christ. If somebody were to come up and to ask and say, well, how do you know that you're going to go to heaven? Because Jesus told me it would. Because when Jesus died on the cross and when he arose from the grave, he promised that if we come to him on faith, that we will be with him for all eternity. I have no doubt about that. And even in the fact that, that I sin while I'm still on this earth, I know that I've given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and I know the promise that he has made to me is for real and that it will become a reality when I draw my last breath off of this earth. That is the Christian hope. Now in the scriptures, it says over in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so consequently, as we look at hope, we realize that, that Jesus Christ has, has given us something that we couldn't give ourselves. Because we can't save ourselves. The law was given by God to Moses and he gave it to the children of Israel and they lived by the law. And it became a God within itself to the people. Because the law did not save them. The law was just giving to them guidance and instruction for how they should live on this earth. But if you read in the New Testament about Old Testament figures like Abraham and others, it will indicate that it was by faith, by faith that they pleased God. And so consequently, in the faith that we have in Jesus Christ, we have the hope and the assurance that one day when this life is over that we will be in his presence. In Romans chapter 8, verse 16, it says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. When we come to faith, the Holy Spirit instills in us the knowledge and the assurance that we know him. Vacation Bible school was great. We had a good time. Tired, had a good time. And there were a couple of salvations that were made during vacation Bible school. And I've been in vacation Bible schools for years, and I've seen kids come to vacation Bible schools. And I've said this before from this pulpit, is that there have been times when I have gone and talked to people and shared with them about Christ and asked them if they were Christian. Oh, yes, I'm a Christian. I said, oh, really? Tell me about your faith walk. Tell me about what you're doing with Christ. Oh, I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to church. I'm not doing anything. I just got saved at vacation Bible school. And I think I've said this before and I'll say it again, that if we do not take these kids who have been saved as children and educate them on how to be a Christian and get them involved in, in the church and, and teach them the ways of God, they will be just like these people that I have talked to said, yeah, I got saved at vacation Bible school and I know I'm going to heaven. That is not what it's all about. If that's what it was all about, I wouldn't be standing before you today and you wouldn't be sitting in this congregation today because we'd be in heaven. But God has left us here for a reason and us adults have a responsibility to teach the children how to be a Christian. How to follow the Lord Jesus Christ when they become saved. That's what it says in the Great Commission. Jesus said, as we are going, make disciples. Oh, good, we can do that. We got a lot of people in this church who are great soul winners and who share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the beginning point. And then we baptize them. And we've had, Lily was baptized just recently. We've got another one that's going to be baptized soon. And, you know, baptism is important because it says publicly that I have committed my life and my hope to Christ. 
Ah, but it's that third point. That third point that really messes us up. Because the third point says, and teach them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. If the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter and the other apostles as they went around starting these, these churches and the early churches, if all they had done was to go and to, to get them saved and then move on and just leave them sitting there, they wouldn't have been any better off if Paul and them had never shown up. But if you read the epistles of Paul and John and Peter, you know that these epistles were written for a primary purpose is to share with these churches people don't back up on your faith learn grow know what it is that you have committed your life to and that's what has to happen today it's 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 a continual process we we don't just save them and drop them we save them and teach them you know, that's why the Nazis and the communists have had so much success in, in, in doing the things that they've done is that they brainwash these kids when they're four years old. And they drill it into their head, drill it into their head, drill it into their head. This is what you are to believe. And they believe it to such a degree that, that nothing can get through their head because it's been drilled into them. I'm not about suggesting that we brainwash our children but I am suggesting that we teach them and we teach them and we teach them and we teach them so that when they grow up and when they become adults they will have a strong foundation in their life because we as God's people have taken the time to say to them we love you Christ loves you and we want you to grow in his grace the second word that I want us to look at this morning hope is the first one the second one is courage courage you know you you hear stories all the time of people who have been courageous in different circumstances and battles and whatever and you hear stories of people who've received the Congressional Medal of Honor because of their valor on the, on the uh, battlefield. And you, you think, this is courage. They had courage to stand in the midst of it. But the courage that we're talking about here is courage to be what Christ has called you to be. Because if you look at the world in which we're living, it's closing in on us day by day. And all of Satan's evil forces are pressing in and pressing in and pressing in to the point that it's, it, it, it's putting us in a position to where we have got to learn who we are. That's the reason I've been asking you to memorize scripture. That's the reason we went through this 40 days of prayer. That's the reason we're doing the things that we do because we need to be strong, courageous as Christians. You've seen that commercial on TV maybe about the woman who has to, she's walking down this hallway and the walls start closing in on her. That she has a hard time breathing so she uses this atomizer to, you know, to get her breath back. Well, that's the way the world is pressing in upon us today and we have got to learn. We have got to learn to stand. We have got to learn with courage to stand on our faith in Christ. One of the greatest examples of that is found in Joshua chapter 1. A few weeks ago I talked about Joshua and the end of Joshua, but this is the beginning of Joshua. And it's talking about the fact that um, God is saying to Joshua, Joshua, Moses is dead. He died on a mountain. He's, he's gone home. He's with me. And Joshua, you in charge. You're going to take these people across the Jordan River and you're going to take them into the promised land and you're going to have to battle for it. And this is what I want you to do, Joshua. 
In verse 6 it says, I want you to be strong. I want you to be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to your fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, and do not be afraid or dismayed, or for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That was God's word to Joshua. It's God's word to us. Well, he told Joshua to be strong, to be of good courage. I think it's over in 1 Corinthians where, where it says, stand firm, stand strong, be courageous, be faithful to the calling that God has given to us. If all we ever do just come to church, go home, never think about God again until next Sunday. We are missing what God wants to say to us. He's missing what God wants to do in our life. Because God wants to fill us with himself over and over and over again and give us what we need to be able to stand strong and to be courageous in the midst of the battle that we're facing each day. Hope, the blessed hope, the hope that is not wishing, but it's a hope that is for sure. Courage is what we need to be able to stand the battles that we're facing day by day. And then the third word that I want us to look at this morning is commitment. A few weeks ago, I guess, in February and March, when I first started here, I did a series on Nehemiah and talking about how Nehemiah began with, with a, a, just a, a burden on his heart. He was brokenhearted over the fact that the walls in Jerusalem were broken down, and he, asked the, he prayed, and then he asked the king if he would give him permission to go and to um, uh, help his city of his ancestors to rebuild the walls around the city. The king gave him not only permission, but he gave him provision. He went and he, he observed the situation and he came back and gathered the people together and said to the people, God has sent me here to lead you to rebuild the walls. And the people said, let us build, let us rise up and build. And so Nehemiah had that commitment, the people had that commitment and they began to build. But guess what? As we talked about in that series, there was opposition. There was Sanballat and there was Tobiah and Gershom. These three men ridiculed Nehemiah. They ridiculed the people. They tried to stop every way they could. They tried to, tried to stop the building of that wall. But it was God's project and it never stopped. And Nehemiah, every time they came against him, he put his hand up as if to say, God has sent me here and God has given me the strength and we're going to build this wall. And the scripture says in chapter 6 that they built the wall and they finished the wall in 52 days. 52 days. Now, that to me is probably the most remarkable thing because Jerusalem is not a small city, not a huge city, but it's not a small city. And to build that wall, and the walls were made of stone, that they had to have people who were willing to put stone upon stone upon stone and put the mortar in and do all the things that they'd done. And to be able to do that in 52 days without uh, barnhart cranes or anything like this, to be able to lift things up and put it into place is the most incredible thing that I have ever read in the Scriptures. But it happened because the people were of a mind to work and the people trusted God and God led them through the process 
healthy traits. If we're going to be a healthy church, if we're going to be a healthy church, then the first thing we need is that we need to be in unity with one another. The second thing that we need is that we need to have a forgiving heart. We need to receive the forgiveness of God for the sins that we commit, and we've got to be willing to forgive other people. We need trust, a willingness to fall back into the arms of Jesus and to know that he is there because he said so in, in, uh, at the end of the Great Commission. He says, for lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age, which means that he's going to be there. If we fall and stumble, he's going to be there to catch us. Faith, that long, enduring thing that we, that we need so much of every day because the faith and the trust go together. Hope. It's not a wishful thing. It's, it's an assurance thing. Blessed assurance. We know that we're going to go to heaven when we die if we have put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Courage. Courage to stand for our convictions. Courage to, to say this is what I believe and this is why I believe it and this is who Jesus Christ is. Courage and commitment to the task that is before us. Is that the kind of church we are? Are we healthy? I hope we are. But if not, I hope that you will take these, so what have I done, seven healthy traits of a church and begin to reflect upon them, begin to think about them. And ask God, God, is there anything in my life that is preventing me from being what you want me to be in this day? Am I seeking unity within the church? Am I a forgiving person? Do I trust you? Do I have faith that you're going to fulfill everything that you have said you're going to do? Do I have the hope that when I die off of this earth that I'm going to be in your presence? Do I have the courage to stand for who you are and stand for my faith and do I have a commitment to go forward and to work for the kingdom of God healthy church is that who we are our church like all churches receives people on faith trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to come and to say I have asked God to forgive me of my sins and I want to come and trust him to be my savior that's number one number two is that if you're a member of another church and you've been attending New Providence Baptist Church for a long time and and, um, just hadn't made that commitment to join the church we invite you to come and become part of New Providence Church, to become a member of this church. We invite you to, to come if, if you're a member of a, another denomination, but you have been baptized by immersion, then you can come on statement of faith. But whatever God may be leading you to do, do it. As the commercial says, just do it. Because God is reaching out and he is saying, I want you to make a decision. I want you to make a decision according to what I have planted in your heart to do. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the truth that you bring in your word. Thank you, Lord, for the strength that you give us each day. Thank you, Lord, that we open the word and that we can truly find courage for the living of each day. And Lord, there's much to be said in these scriptures. And I pray, dear God, that you will help us to learn them, help us to grow in our faith and our walk with you, and to be faithful to the calling that you have given. Dear God, I pray that if there's any here today who needs to make any any decision that you have placed upon their heart, I pray, dear God, that you will not, that they will not delay but that they will do what you have asked them to do, to be faithful to that calling. So whatever, Lord, you're saying to our heart, whatever you're speaking, 
may that be, Lord, that which we do today. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. Good to see everybody today, and um, hope you have a great Sunday afternoon. Be back tonight, Vacation Bible School. Uh, even, like uh, Charles said, if you hadn't even been a part of Bible School this week, you need to come because um, it's uh, it's good to see what goes on and see the kids and, and all the things that they've done and learned this week. Um, the past the search committee is not meeting tonight uh, due to the Bible School day day thing, but we are meeting next week. And as Daniel said last week, we have received a lot of resumes and we're praying and seeking God's leadership in our life uh, as a church body as to where he would have us to go and what he would have us to do. And, and um, so just be patient and keep praying because the committee needs all the prayer support that they can receive at this particular point. So Andy. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity we had to come and worship you this morning. Uh, I'm thankful that your spirit was here with us and indwelt in this place with us. Um, I'm thankful for the message that you laid on Pastor Ray's heart that he can, that he brought to us. And I pray that we heard it and that, it, that we, hear your, we heard your voice through him. And I pray for the food that's up here that's going to go to the Good Samaritan and go out to the families in our community that are in need. I pray this food not only goes out to, sp- not, that not only it's a physical hunger that's, um, that they need, but the spiritual hunger that they get as they go to Good Samaritan, that they hear the gospel, and that and all the people that, all the kids that were here this week, um, the two salvations we had make all last week worth it, and, and everything that we did, all the fun and crafts, but those salvations were the most important thing, and I pray that we as a church can take them and lead them as um, and disciple them as they grow up and do great things in your name. I pray all those things in your son's name. Amen. <laughs> 